Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Carlick with Flying and Eating. Today, let's go somewhere and do something. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Good morning. Hey, everybody. It's Adam here. On today's adventure, we're in a car. This is not flying and eating. This is driving and eating. Maybe. We'll see if we get food. It being almost Christmas time, I thought it'd be kind of an interesting little adventure. And you guys see the title, so you already know where we're going. But this one doesn't. I'm going to surprise her with something. And she's going to maybe like it. Or she won't. I Hopefully. probably won't. She probably won't like it. That's what she's telling me. <laughs> we're we're going to do that stuff, and then there's going to be some more things. I'm just going to show you some touristy stuff, kind of semi-local to me. But really, we're focusing on this one thing because the holidays. Hope you enjoy this oddball episode. Surprise! There we are, the Home Alone house. <laughs> are you happy to see it? Yeah. Yeah, she's a big Home Alone fan. Big John Hughes fan. You gotta remember John Hughes filmed all this stuff in Chicago, so nowadays the house is of course a private home, so don't go bothering these people. They have built up a fence so that people don't go over there. If you ever do want to check out this house, it is in Winnetka, which is a suburb of Chicago. Uh, very nice. They have little signs that say keep off the grass, so do your best to respect it. Obviously they have a bunch of cameras and fences because people always try to do stupid things here, but yeah, the, just respect the fact that this is still somebody's house. But uh, we're gonna go take a look at a few other Home Alone associated sites. I think she likes the house. <laughs> Nearby the house, you'll see this place called Ice Cream Graters. Actually, in the, in the film, in Home Alone, this is actually where Kevin goes in for a toothbrush. And then he proceeds to shoplift her, and he runs out here into this park. So that whole scene where he's chasing the cop, or the cop's chasing after him, and they're going through all that stuff, that all happens right in here. Today, this remains still a park. And along the way, you can see shots of a train line which is still there in use today. This is Hubbard Woods Park. When I was a kid, I remember actually coming over here to the house. We actually got to go inside of it when I was a kid. Really? Yes, there's a whole story behind that. Uh, basically, long story short, my mom's friend uh, lived three doors down, and then they called, we freaked out when we saw the house, <laughs> and her neighbor called, she's like, these are some kids who wanna see it. Keep in mind, they didn't actually film the movie in the house, it was just done for exteriors. Yeah. They actually filmed it in the uh, high school gymnasium of New Trier High School here in the Chicago area. Um, so this part, though, when I was a kid, still had the, um, uh, the drugstore, essentially. So it looked a lot more familiar. These days, it doesn't look a whole lot like it did, but there you go. Macaulay Culkin once ran through here <laughs> being chased by a cop. Once upon a time. <laughs> once upon a time, babe. So on our last little bit of the Home Alone tour here, because uh, most of the other stuff is just kind of in the city and I just thought it'd be fun to show you the stuff around Winnetka. There's also the church. Now I'm sure you guys remember it towards the end of the film, uh, or Wilmette, sorry, not Winnetka. Um, this is Wilmette. Uh, around the end of the film with the manger scene and all that, and then, you know, the, the wet bandits kind of drive past and say they're not going in there, and then Kevin runs inside. That's this place. Today it is still an active church, as you can see. What do you think of this? What did you think of seeing some of these Home Alone sites, babe? Oh, no problem, babe. So you had some fun today? Yes, I did, but it would be nice if we didn't keep snowing. Yeah, it's snowing. Well, what do you want? It's like, you know, it's Christmas. Halloween. It's Christmas. No, By the time they see this, it's Christmas. Oh, okay, I mean, it's Christmas. There you go. <laughs> so while not Home Alone related, we do have a little bonus John Hughes thing. So, babe, I took us somewhere special for you. What's the deal with this place? This is where a part of Planes, Trains, and Automobiles was filmed. Which part? Um, <clears throat> so it's near the ending... Uh, they're staying in the motel, um, Steve Martin's character has had to basically sell off his watch to be able to afford a room at this place, and unfortunately John Candy's character can't because he doesn't have enough money, so he ends up actually staying outside in the snow. So this is one of your favorite movies, right? Oh yeah, easily top three. Mm -hmm. So is it cool being, like, here? It is, yeah, it's really surreal. <laughs> well, I'm glad you like it. Yep. The house tour of John Hughes stuff continues. Does anybody recognize this? I think you do. Of course I do. What is it? It's from Uncle Buck. Really? Yep. Uncle Buck? Mm -hmm. what's, what's Uncle Buck like? Uncle Buck's a really cool movie. It's one of my favorite childhood movies, actually. Tell me about it. <laughs> um, well, basically, it stars John Candy, and he has to come look after the kids while his brother and his wife go away, because her dad has a heart attack. So he has to come look after the kids in that house. So, 
John Candy Movie House. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, obviously from John Hughes, who did a ton of movies up here and just yeah. slightly north of Chicago. Love Chicago. Yeah, since you uh, are you loved all these movies, I know Home Alone's a big one for you. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Uncle Buck. What's it like to actually like be seeing some of this stuff in real life? <laughs> it's surreal because I never thought I'd actually get to see any of this stuff really. <laughs> it's true. Like she and I have known each other for like ten years, and you go back all that way. She was still talking Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, Uncle Buck, and Home Alone for years. Yeah. Very was. consistent. Very consistent. <laughs> but anyway, there you go, babe. You get to enjoy the Uncle Buck house. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm showing her random areas of the Chicago suburbs, and I thought this would be kind of an intriguing one. You've always wanted to go to Italy, right? Uh, yeah, totally. So I'm going to show her something. It's You don't need to go all the way to Italy. We have one of these. Behold! The Leaning Tower of Niles. The famous one. Not the Leaning Tower of Pisa. This is the Leaning Tower of Niles. Isn't it awesome, babe? Um, yeah, Leaning Tower of Niles, circa 1932, and it apparently is part of a uh, National Register of Historic Places by the Department of Interior. So, uh, yeah, I don't know why this got built exactly. They just decided to do a replica of the Leaning Tower of Pisa, and um, yeah. Couldn't exactly tell you why, but next door is a Costco and a Target, so it's basically the quintessential American version. This is just one of these random oddities one must observe in the suburbs, I guess. So what do you think of the Leaning Tower of Nile? It is the most random thing I have ever seen in my entire life. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> did, you, did you enjoy the oddity? Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, I, this was a surprise. I was like, I'm going to show you something. She's like, we need to go to Sephora. And I was I like... I didn't say that. I said I'll happily look at anything you want to show me. Where are we going right now? Costco. Sephora. No, I Anyway, said... so I wanted to show her something odd. No. <laughs> yes. Yes. So in our continuing random excursion around oddball sites throughout Chicago that you've kind of wanted... It went from John Hughes, you know, Happy Holidays, Home Alone, to this is the grave of Al Capone, one of the most infamous criminals in American history. He happens to be buried right here. Right here. Uh, that's his actual grave site. For reasons I don't know, other than maybe the comedy of it, they have put dollar bills. I, we had nothing to do with this. Tell oh, them. Oh, I didn't put anything there. No, we, we wouldn't do that. And especially no cigar. Yeah, people put cigars there. Uh, over here, this is like the Capone family site area. And so people have actually placed uh, Jack Daniels and other types of alcohol and cigars to Al Capone. Now, Al Capone is fortunately or unfortunately iconically associated with my city of Chicago. People seem to think he's still like running around here somewhere. No, I assure you he is deceased and that is his location. But uh, if you ever want to see Al Capone's gravesite, it's at, uh, what's the name of this place? The Caramel? Mount Carmel Cemetery out in basically the western Chicago suburbs. What? Hillside. See, she doesn't live here and she knows it better than I do. I've never, I've never, we're in this. I've never been here before. This is just a cool little site. So thanks, babe, for dragging me out here. So we're in another cemetery. So this is kind of like the Al Capone thing, but we're combining it with the whole John Hughes movie thing. This is actually John Hughes' grave right here, right behind the lovely Mrs. Down there, John Hughes, acclaimed filmmaker. Apologies for the noise, by the way. The acclaimed filmmaker, John Hughes, who made so many movies that you love that we've seen some of the sites too, Home Alone, Uncle Buck, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. This is his final resting place here in the suburbs of Chicago, Illinois. How does it make you feel being here? Once again, it feels surreal. Yeah? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Anything else you want to say? No, not really. Well, just thank you for bringing me here. Oh, thank you for coming. Our John Hughes tour continues in a very personal way to me. Behind me, you'll see this football field. Now, what movie do you recognize that might have a football field in it? The Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club, that is correct. So where we actually are right now is Main South High School in uh, Park Ridge, Niles area. I actually, this is my high school. I actually went here. And the one thing they would tell us all the time when we were growing up was like, part of the Breakfast Club was shot here. So here's the story. There are four schools that were all part of each other. Main North, Main South, Main East, Main West. Uh, Main North ceased to function because they just didn't need that many schools. And then I think it was 1981, they shut it down. They actually turned it over to John Hughes and said, go film your movie in there. So they filmed everything in there. With the one exception being the part at the end of the movie where Judd Nelson does like this thing, that happened right back there. There was a small update to this. Apparently in 2015, uh, when Main South was doing some restructuring, inside a file cabinet they actually found an original first draft of The Breakfast Club by John Hughes. 
And I don't know what ended up happening to it, but they gave it to him because they had to film part of the movie here, so the school was still sitting on it. The other reference to this school in John Hughes lore, watch Home Alone 2. Buzz is wearing a jacket featuring the uh, Maine South Hawks logo. You don't care at all, do you? What? I'll say you... Oh, okay. So our, our little John Hughes tour continues. This is a street. Do you remember this street? I do. The street? Well, you guys probably don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, right. You might now know what it is. Now, can you tell them what this is? It's the Planes, Trains, and Automobiles house. Yes. If you guys remember in Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, this is where Steve Martin's family lives, and this is the house they're trying to get to. In the film, towards the end of the film, you'll actually see Steve Martin and John Candy walk up this street, and they go straight on in to that house. I know this is like one of your favorite movies ever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What, and my mother's. What's it like seeing this in person? Again, as I always say, it's surreal. <laughs> it really is. Now, I like that movie. We actually just watched it on Thanksgiving. It was we fun did, to, yeah. to watch it again. Um, but yeah, watching that with her was a, quite the experience because I always knew that was one of her first like favorite films. Mm -hmm. So the fact that I was like, oh, you know, that house is like 20 minutes away. You want to go see it? Yeah, she jumped on that. So we thought we'd share it with you guys. If you ever do come out to Chicago and you don't want to see all the normal touristy stuff, which we didn't show you any of in this video, yep. there are some oddities, especially if you're a John Hughes fan, because all, all of his stuff was pretty much filmed around this area. Hmm. And you can also, of course, check out his grave, which we did. Yep. Yeah. So enjoy. You, you happy you got to see all this stuff? I am, yes. Good. <laughs> Surprise, we actually are going to do some food here. So I'm in front of Easy Street Pizza, which is currently, and just very serendipitously, for the month of December 2023, has decked itself out as Little Nero's Pizza from Home Alone. Yes, they, this is, I don't know if this is licensed, but if you go inside, there's all this Home Alone stuff. So we went ahead and ordered what you would expect, the little cheese pizza just for me. Or what was the exact line? You know what I'm talking about when Kevin says that. The missus is in the car. Unfortunately, it's raining, so we're doing a takeout thing. But I'll show you a little bit of the inside before we check out the pizza. But this was just an amazing little John Hughes coincidence that I thought was just amusing. So this is the pizza. Are you impressed by it? It's freaking huge. Yeah, it's also very basic, but I mean, obviously this is nothing really that special. We just kind of did this for the joke and the fact that it was contextually relevant to the video. But what's the line? For the views. No, <laughs> plain cheese pizza just for me. No, no, that's not what he says. He goes, ah, a lovely cheese pizza just for me. There you go. See, she knows the movie better than I do. Yeah, even though you literally said it earlier, but okay. Yeah, I suck. Mm-hmm. Hey, we know it's dark out and uh, we wanted to show you another random oddity of the Chicago suburbs, technically. This is in Gary, Indiana. Do you know what this is? I do. What is it? Tell them. It's Michael Jackson's childhood home. Yes, Michael Jackson's childhood home happens to be what is technically the Chicago suburbs or Northwest Indiana, which is sort of Chicagoland. Um, it is, I don't know what it actually is now. Does somebody live in this, do you think? Or is I it? Know, no idea. We also know it's nighttime and we apologize, but uh, we thought you guys might appreciate just another little random, totally not John Hughes related thing. Anything else you want to say about it? You like Michael Jackson? I do, yeah. I really like, really like Michael yeah. Jackson, but... They have like Jackson 5 stuff and all that, so... Yeah, Gary, Indiana is kind of known for this house. And not the fact that Michael else. Jackson was born here. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, not much else. She's right. How, do you, how have you enjoyed your time in Indiana so far? How do people live here? There you go. Like, no offense if you do actually live here and you're watching this, but, like, how do you live here? Uh, to be fair, <laughs> she's only been to Gary. There's no other part of Indiana she's been to. Gary... Okay, if you live in Gary. Yeah. Chicago's nearby. You should go check that out. Yeah. But I do appreciate that you have this, at least. So you can see there's a whole bunch of stuff about Michael Jackson. People put locks up here. They put a bunch of things like, we miss you and everything. Now, apparently, there used to be, like, a big memorial to him here. But, like, in 2017, the memorial, which apparently was, like, 5,000 pounds... Over, it was over here. It was over here, like, in the yard right? Mm -hmm. In uh, 2017, the memorial was either removed intentionally or stolen, which is 5,000 pounds. So that would be really complicated, but apparently happened. On our John Hughes tour, I actually have something else to show you that's really Chicago related. This is the Art Institute of Chicago. Mrs. Korlick wants me to apologize on behalf of my hair, and she's completely right about that. But the Art Institute of Chicago, you guys might remember if you saw Ferris Bueller's Day Off, which is this like iconic film for Chicago. The, the characters, Ferris Bueller and friends, all run around inside this museum looking at different uh, paintings and things. This is also Michigan Avenue in which I believe they, you know, other characters drive that car around on. But this is like actually a Chicago thing uh, and is also considered one of the best museums in the world. I think a few years ago, some group that's actually responsible for determining that, I don't know how you determine that exactly, but the group determining that actually said it outranked the Louvre. The French were very upset. So this has absolutely nothing to do with John Hughes. This is the Starbucks Re Reserve Chicago, the biggest Starbucks in the entire world. Five floors of fancy Starbucks. This Starbucks has cocktails. 
whiskey aged barrel coffee. The only coffee I'd ever describe as smooth. It has nothing to do with this, but it is a fun thing to do in Chicago if you're ever down here. If Chinese was still around, he totally would have filmed there, I guarantee it. By the way, at some point in the future on this channel, I will do a much better video about the Starbucks reserves in the United States. I've shown you a couple of them. I know I did a whole video about the one in Japan. I got an idea, but you're going to have to wait. I don't know when, could be years, but I've got an idea. So the John Hughes Tours continues. We're actually now at the top of the Sky Deck Chicago and the former Sears Tower. I refuse to call it under its current name for different reasons as a citizen. Uh, this is actually the spot in Ferris Bueller's Day Off where, the, where Cameron, uh, as well as Swan, and of course Ferris himself are standing. And the city has actually marked those spots so that you can see out onto the city from the perspective the characters had. How do you feel being in yet another filming location of John Hughes? Well, the John Hughes filming location is pretty cool, but it's more scary to me being stood up. Sorry. It's pretty cool, though. This is like an actual touristy thing in the city, but it is it does work for the context of our video since, you know, John Hughes thing, right? Mm -hmm. This is the, uh, the ledge, by the way. You can stand up here. This did not exist in the Ferris Bueller Day era, but look at that. You can look all the way straight down. That's really cool. How are you handling this? <laughs> Did you guys think we really were going to do an episode without an airport in it? Well, I guess technically we did with Cosmics. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so here at Chicago O'Hare, my hometown airport, this whole thing ends where it began. Home Alone actually shot a whole bunch of scenes here. So our John Hughes tour continues just before it ends. In both Home Alone 1 and 2, you will recall there's a part where the McAllisters are desperately running to their airplane, and they go down a hall that has a whole bunch of flags. Today, that's this is what the hall looks like. Now, normally, they actually do have flags still up there. This is temporary because of the holidays, so they put up a bunch of Christmas stuff, but usually the flags will still be there. This isn't a whole lot changed from the way it is depicted in the film, or both films, really. Continuing down the hallway here, there's actually a scene exclusive to Home Alone 2 in which you may recall Kevin's family is running in one direction and Kevin is lagging behind and following a different man he believes to be his father, and they split off. That is right here. So in the film, uh, the McAllisters run down this section. Kevin, who is running very late, goes down this section. Now, if we further down this section, we can actually see a location that was used for Home Alone 1, which, guess what? That's exactly what we're going to do. In the reality of the geography of O'Hare, the split I just showed you is down there. So if you were to walk down here, this is how you would get to your gates. However, because movie magic, the McAllisters, when they're running to their gate, they're actually coming from this direction. So in the film, you see them walking, or more accurately running, around here, and then they go around this corner to what is currently gate K9. Now, in the film, this was an American Airlines section, which it actually still is, in reality, this is an American Airlines hub at Chicago O'Hare. Kind of enemy territory for me. I'm Team United, but it doesn't matter. Um, now, in the movie, they just run over straight to K gate K9. Now, that's where a ticket agent dressed in red uh, is very like, oh, you just made it. And then it's run, run, Rudolph. And then they just run right onto the jetway there. So uh, they, I'm not entirely certain why they chose this specific gate. Maybe it was because of those doors. I really don't know. But those are emergency exit doors. You wouldn't actually use those. But all the same, this is where our little John Hughes tour ends. And I hope you guys really enjoyed this. Uh, I'm sorry you didn't get to see Mrs. Korlick here. I just kind of had to do a little bonus flight that she didn't need to be part of. So, yeah, uh, she sends her best. It's pretty surreal. <laughs> it's surreal. Once again, it feels surreal. As I always say, it's surreal. Anyway, uh, I hope you guys had fun with this video and the whole adventure throughout the suburbs, and I hope you guys have a happy holidays and all that. Uh, if you don't see another video for a little while, don't take it personally. I got a lot of stuff going on. McDonald's, as you guys know, is based here, so it's, a, it's everywhere. Um, <laughs> anyway, so I got other stuff going on. You'll get videos soon enough. Uh, but yeah, anyway, happy holidays, happy new year, all that fun stuff. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please go into the description, check out the social media stuff, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, Patreon, Spreadshirt, etc. I appreciate that. Please like, comment, subscribe. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all later.